though also rather disgusting. But Jonathan, as the resident Australian here, I don't think so. I think it's quite a beautiful hero. Yeah, you're perfectly at home here. You've got the spider and the scorpion in this ah, game. So yes. it's just like your backyard. It certainly is, Jonathan. It certainly is. Game number two. OG, we'll see if they go for an early team fight once again here for game two. As of course, game one, they were able to secure first blood. Leave on to Januar with ATF. Group up already in the mid lane, but see what does pan out. At the mid, the last big sanking as well coming up from OG. You'd, you'd have to agree a very, very good counter towards that Broodmother. Just with the, the Burrow Strike Caustic Finale, you just end up bursting all the spiderlings down. Probably going to make the uh, the Brood's life rather hard this game, would you say, John? Yeah, it would be annoying. Even just getting the early shard up is going to be really annoying for Fnatic to deal with. Just moving around, you're going to be able to slow down those spiderlings and just kind of get a good shake, chase going and just kind of farm them up. Good words being dropped from Fnatic, at least on that cliffside a while ago being pointed out by our observers, of course. Uh, and not, not too much action, just a lot of posturing. We'll see if Fnatic can get more runes. Yeah. They did start like 3-1 to one in OG's favor last time. Well, Fnatic, they're going to be able to try and abuse Jabs' as, uh, the spider webs here, but not going to be able to get away with it. DJ unable to get the banner rune off Yuragi as well, so two for two banner rune trade this time around. So you know Alchemist to have to worry about either. So we will start with the bottom lane. Yuragi, of course, going to be on the Arc Warden, along with Chu on the Train Protector against DJ on that Monkey King. Of course, you will have Jabs on the off lane Broodmother. Not too hard of a lane so far for the Brood. We'll see how much impact they can have, but we kind of said this game number one as well. If you're Yuragi, chances are you're not really going to be too pressured too much up until that level six mark. Yeah, you can have a little bit more play for Fnatic here. It does feel like you might be able to chase around with DJ by level two, level three. Could be a decent enough spike for that Broodmother to kind of trade. They didn't quite cut the tree line though, because uh, DJ's going to want to use that as well. And you're seeing Chu just being very confident, running up, getting some good right clicks off. His base damage is really damn high, so once you find that spider, you just kind of crush it. And you see the way they just kind of abuse the spark rates here, making sure Jabs has to walk the long way around. And like you mentioned, I mean, they did not take down the tree line, so it is going to be a rather nice lane here for Chu. Mind you, he is against the Monkey King, so the Jingu Mastery might get a little bit annoying, but as a train protector, you don't really care too much. You'll be just fine. The bot lane already going to swimming lane. Of course, we were having a look earlier at the mid lane as well as Jabs. He's going to get chased down a little bit, but he's going to be able to outrun Chu eventually. I say that. Spark Wraith is also going to be there onto Jabs. It's constant harassment coming up from OG. Just never really allowing any breathing room here for the side of Fnatic. Yeah, you do, you do want to apply that pressure early on. You definitely don't want that Broodmurder to come online quick. It can really take over the map a lot better. Oh, top lane. Palos going to be first blood here. ATF once again able to secure first blood here on the off lane, and that's a pretty rough start here for Palos, that's for sure. Yeah, you can't underestimate that Penitence bonus. It makes it so much easier to run down. You've got a pretty passive support in the Enchantress. You know, John Well does go for the Enchant and the Attendance for a little bit of sustain. It's just not enough to really keep your Razor alive. And it's not the easiest Razor lane as well. You can always burst strike away from the static link. Certainly so. Yuragi still having a, a very good time here. Jab's also doing so. At that mid lane, we were having a look a little bit earlier. The, the Puck matchup against the TA, John. It hardly say it should favor the Puck. The TA just doesn't really seem to lose the lane, but it seems like, for now, at the very least, Armel is actually behind BZM, and BZM just not really pressured whatsoever. Yeah, the big difference in this lane is going to be the small camps. You already have a block from Fnatic on the small camp. BZM's not going to be able to farm it up. Armel has a smooth ride onto his own, but he is under vision. They've got a good forward ward here from OG Zen to keep a track. So whether or not Armel gets easy access there to catch up is another question. We might see OG themselves kind of Yuragi. get offensive. Bottom lane, going to be dived here by Jabs, though they might just find DJ first. Yuragi still going to go for a run, but Jabs, one more right click will do it. The Arc Warden, oh. though, on for the run of the Spiderweb. Going to be there in time, and Jabs does secure the right click he needed. A very nice kill and very nice trade for the side of Fnatic in this bot lane. Yeah, again, it's that level three timing. You've got more damage, more utility coming out from DJ. Jabs can trade very nicely now with the Insatiable bung, uh, Hunger and the Silken Bola up for the mischance. So there is more pressure there, and this is a good shakeup for Jabs compared to game one. That certainly is a top lane. Well, never mind that, Jabs. Bottom lane going to cop a bit of a bit of damage here with the Flux. Slow it up, but is going to be just fine. Yuragi going to be able to follow up there with Chu, so just keeping the Broodmother rather low. DJ looks like he might go for a bit of a wrap, just to get that banner in. And you know, John, the one lane we continue to try and talk about is this top lane. Genuel, of course, against Tiger, the classic Chen versus Enchantress matchup, and 
You do have the sanking, of course, against that Pos 1 Razor. We saw the first blood happen against Palos as well. It's a bit of a rough start once again. I mean, Palos is still doing okay in terms of CS. In fact, ATF already handed the tip side here for Palos. <laughs> it looks like he's having a very good time. Yeah, he's up there in CS, keeping up nicely with a Razor. They basically have a 1v1 lane, so you're just kind of farming up. And it does hurt the Chen and Enchantress, but they don't have that impact. I feel like it hurts John Yuel a lot more, not being able to play offensively with his Enchant for the slow and getting a rundown with a Razor. So you're getting what you want from OG. Just tracking where John Yuel goes, and they might find him. Yeah, they may. They've got so many stuns available here onto Chen Yuel, but he barely gets the heal off. They're unable to get the damage off in time to kill off Chen Yuel, but it's only a very scary position for the Enchantress. And with just the double Mud Golems, John, just so much damage being pumped out with those stuns. Don't forget, you can split them up eventually, have four of the little bastards, and they do a lot of damage. Yeah, a lot of damage, really good chain stuns as well to just keep someone pinned down for that much longer. And again, you, you've got to watch yourself here. It's, it's very back and forth, but the solo lane does feel like it's going to be a lot more important for a Mar to find yeah. comparison. So he's just, again, building up. He already has a soul ring almost ready to go straight into the blink once that's up. And then that aggression kicks in. You're just chasing down. You've got great stuns. You've got great damage. Great wave clear with a sandstorm and caustic. It's not going to be the easiest for Jabs to kind of dance around if that does happen for Amar. Certainly so won't. Down the strike though. Down the bot lane. They're going to try and make the jump in onto Yuragi once again. Jabs has plenty of damage right now. Yuragi in pretty big trouble. He'll go for a long kind of route back towards the top tier, or rather bottom tier one, and does actually make it out. Able to secure enough damage onto Yuragi to secure the kill. Yuragi, he'll be more than happy with that, but. For Fnatic, they could certainly look to jump back in once the balance is back up. And DJ already prepping in position, though, top lane. TF getting rather low himself, but also able to get himself out as DJ. Still having a look around, but Yuragi, he knows. We're trying to abuse the Spark Wraiths to get some vision onto the Monkey King. They do find him. You know, DJ right behind the bottom T1. Very patiently waiting for Yuragi to be out of position, but Yuragi in that kind of sweet spot where you can't really reach with the balance strike. And the jab's not really nearby anyway to try and move in for the damage. Yeah, he, his charge into Jingu just expires. We'll try again, though. They will. Primal Spring will be there as well. Yuragi just going to get deleted here by GJ. The patience does end up paying off here for Fnatic. It'll be a two for two now. Both sides and very even start to this game number two. And this is the kind of game that I think Adam was looking for. Focus on the heroes. Focus on those strong lanes. Try to get more and slow down OG from just getting that massive build-up. Great start for Jabs means your Broodmunder will have a little bit more presence here. Oh, ATF will be chased down here by Palos. They'd love a bit of revenge here onto the Sanking, and eventually we'll find it. Palos, able to secure the kill. will be able to walk his way out and be just fine, as even Yuragi shows up now on the Arc Warden. I suppose Yuragi has had more than enough with Fnatic down at that bot lane, so he'll just make his way up top early on. And ATF, I suppose, at this point as well, seeing the Broodmother is level 6, you do want to start switching up the lanes and having that advantage with the Sanking versus Broodmother. Yeah, you, you definitely want to start slowing down Jabs. He's got the Spiderlings ready to go. But with you, the bot tier one tower is going to be pressured in, leading to more avenues to kind of take that bot jungle over. And Chu. they find you. They will bound the strike. Primal Spring will be there as well, but Chu's going to be just fine. You see there to heal him up a little bit as well. Again, ATF being there on the Sanking now should put a, a real nice stop to the push that was incoming from Fnatic. Very, very hard with the Spiderlings to try and make anything happen against the Sanking and well, for Jabs, you do just seem completely creep skipping now. It's around that point where you just creep skip, go to the jungle, creep skip again, go to the jungle, and just kind of trade farm with this Anki. You're from Australia, Mike. Have you ever seen a spider fight a scorpion? <laughs> Is that something that happens? I, I haven't seen it, John, but I'm sure it has happened multiple times. The things you see in Australia, John, you wouldn't believe, let me tell you. Genuel of a top lane. Boundless Strike will be there as Tiger is going to get dropped here on the Chen. Palos did move in for a bit more damage, but won't make the jump in onto Yuragi. They're more than happy with the kill they secure, and after all, it is a Chen John. You, you do want to try and get off to a decent start here to get that snowball going. So Tiger, being taken down, going to be a little bit detrimental to the, to the plans of OG, but Fnatic, once again, really trying to give it back the way of OG for this game, too. They've, man they've managed to do a great job of slowing down Tiger. Still level 3. The mech is slowly being built up, but the creep army is just not there. Jump in. BZM's going to show up at the top lane, so Chen Yuel is going to drop Chu, able to secure that kill on the train. It's a bit of a wraparound coming in here as well. DJ, he's going to find himself a courier. Does give his position away for that, but doesn't seem like he was really going to be able to set up a, a fight for his team anyway. And in the meantime, it seems like um, Mel might be going for a T1 mid tower push as we speak. It's a bit of a solo shove in, but from him, he's been left alone for so long. Still a top. That's a big kill once again onto the Arc Warden. They've got him. 
And Armel, he's just casually pushing mid tier one. Like, you've got to address one of these things. Do you want to hold on to the mid tier one tower? Do you want to save Yuragi? It seems like they will prioritize the mid tier one tower as. But naturally, you do need that space to farm up on this Arc Warden. You see the TPs coming in. OG, they want to try and force a fight. Green Pearl is there. ATF going to move in with the epicenter. Armel going to be targeted. Does get taken down very easily by the side of OG. They should be able to find themselves a secondary kill here onto Jan Yuel. And eventually, we'll go for a bit of a run. But BZM going to be right behind him. And they should have the kill in just a moment. And they will. Chu will take it. Great punishment onto that mid. We were just talking about all that space Armel has. And they, they kind of slow him down. He did have a decent enough lead. Not that much over BZM. But he is a high priority here. Building into the Draglance. The Desolator timing for the TA here is key in getting that push off. OG right now it does feel like they've been much more willing to sacrifice ATF. Yuragi alone. Spidlings are going down. High fives are coming out. Jabs and Amar just going at it as Jabs is going to go for a bit of a man fight. And... ATF does not want to borrow this though, Jabs, he's dropping rather low now, John! Oh, oh high God. fives are out, tips are out as well. They'll tip ATF before he tips them. <laughs> that's the only way you win that tipping battle. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a sign that maybe it's not so beefy, right? He acknowledges he got kind of juked around there. They do manage to find a kill on BZM. Oh, what a hurricane! What a pushback on a Palos! That's perfect, right into the spark rates, and uh, it's just rough. Meanwhile, DJ to mess around with BCM in this replay and did he find him? Yeah, yeah, he, he found him while all that action was happening, bought with it back and forth with ATF. So it, it's not the worst trade in the world, although losing your Broodmutter is painful and that blink timing for Amar is going to be super fast. It's already up uh, 10 and a half minutes in and now the aggression can come in from Amar. Right? They've been sacrificing Yuragi, they've been grouping up around him, now they can play around off the Sand King and just give that uh, Arc Warden, all the space it needs to get max value from the Midas. Right. So they can kind of stall for the Arc Warden now and just play his four. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the stall game when it comes to this hero, John. That's why I hate it so much. This Arc Warden just... Yeah, it used to be heroes like Sniper, John. They just delay the game <laughs> over and over again, and now we've got Arc Warden. My favorite. Are you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, we've already had the discussion before if you would tinker an Arc Warden. Arc Warden ah. definitely is something yeah. else. Still shoving in mid here from OG, so... Looks like they're the ones who want to put that pressure to stop Fnatic from having control for Armel to farm. Yeah. And they've got the army to back it up. Oh, you've got the Chen army, of course, so you definitely want to get this going. Fnatic, they are going to be around to try and defend this. Kind of a hard ask here as DJ, already getting caught out by the Tempest double, and now oh. a Burrow Strike ATF. He's in onto two. Oh, they've got the Overgrowth to follow up as well. That'll be two gone already. DJ, he is going to buy it back to try and force the fight as ATF, dropping rather low himself, will end up going down on the Sand King. And OG, they still get away with this mid-tier one tower, John. You might find Tiger. It'll be a secondary kill perhaps to come out for Fnatic. Even a Dream oh. Coil being thrown out now as BZM wants to try back onto Armel. Almost has the damage up, but the refraction is going to be there in time. So they will actually find a third in the form of Chu. And so not really a too bad of a team fight for Fnatic. My only concern being they did still lose the mid-tier one tower, but it does seem like they are going to be able to counter. In fact, BZM, not out of the woods yet, but... We'll be able to get his way out eventually. BZM even giving the respect over to DJ, who has been terrorizing this puck. Yeah, they've, they've managed to do a great job of recovering from Fnatic. They take the mid-tier one as well. They find a decent enough fight. Amar did reveal that blink really nicely, right? They grouped up mid, immediate smoke out. That space was worthwhile. And even for Fnatic, evening out there just doesn't feel like it's enough. You do still have a small net worth lead. Armel still hitting his item timings. Dragonlance up into the blink next. But... You definitely need to start buying or start allowing jabs to make space. He's playing down bot. He's gotten a lot of space out for himself, working onto the ags. If he can drag attention to himself to allow the TA to freely farm, it would be a lot stronger. They've got Palos here, John. Palos just so far forward on that pause one razor. Maybe just a little bit too confident here against OG. Does get taken out and jabs. He tried to help out on the Broodmother. He's going to be okay to walk his own way out, but Palos just way too far forward. Does get taken out and punished by OG. It's fanatic. I mean, they'll still group up here down at the bot lane, but they've, they've got to be cautious. Yeah, and I think Palos understands he's not really the win condition. He's taking riskier farm. He's not in the jungle. He's allowing Armel to take that space, so he's going to cop it. Yeah. Even even Jabs is not willing to really die too much as he wants that Ags build up. The Razor only needs that BKB. At least has the Ogre Axe up, so it's not going to take that much longer. That is a lot of space for OG to go straight into the Roche Pit for them. Absolutely. I mean, you've got the Chen. 
Dark Troll Summoner, John. You oh love boy. those skellies. Who doesn't love a good skeleton, John? It's Yuragi. He's going to back his way out. They don't seem to feel quite confident enough to keep going for this Roshan, but they will leave it at just less than half HP. Meanwhile, DJ, Monkey King, again, very, very deep. The, uh, the jungle of the Radiant. And that mid lane, just trying to find somebody to snipe or just get some information for his team. There's only so much he can do, though, right? Like, you, you can't really dive that deep. You just kind of... <laughs> DJ, I mean, you can pretend to be a tree, DJ, uh, but trees don't generally move, sir. You sure? Oh, Not in Australia? Oh, you never I thought know. anything happens down there. <laughs> Moving trees, scorpion spider battles. Look at this, John. Look at him go. What is he doing? He's walking I, as a tree, John. Ah, oh, he's hiding. He, maybe he's trying to hide from wards, snipe couriers, or he just really likes cosplaying. Yeah. It's a beautiful tree there from uh, from DJ. Very, very good cosplay indeed. Meanwhile, right in the jungle, a pretty big group up going on as DJ's still hanging around and does scout out the ancient uh, ancient stacks being made by OG. Just a double oh. stack being made, though, as Fnatic. Try and find Yuragi here at the top lane. Yuragi, I mean, his Tempest double did just expire, so they know this is the real one as they do make the jump in. Yuragi, he's a massive pickup here for Fnatic, and he does get taken out. Meanwhile, Jabs. He gets caught down to the bot lane, but he's a Broodmother. He might be able to find a way out of the epicenter. He's going to be there from ATF. So it is going to be a one-for-one -one trade, but you'd have to argue it favors Fnatic. They, they find the Pos 1 Arc Warden once again. And yeah, he managed to slow down that timing for the Maelstrom into the travel to prevent that huge split push coming out at least a little bit longer. And you are getting that build up on Armel. He gets his blink, immediately gets active, and they manage to steal away to his ancient stacks that DJ found. So his time dancing around the trees is paying off. It certainly is. The, uh, the ancient stacks kind of being taken out. Oh, Tiger will just take him. Absolutely. Why the hell not Tiger's the carry now? When you play Chen John, you can just kind of do anything in this game. Is jump in again, Fnatic. Speaking of Tiger, he's going to get jumped Ooh. on. What a Palos strike out onto two into the backside as Tiger still somehow alive. Palos is the one dropping on the razor, but no, he won't make his way out. They'll take him down. Chu's gone as well, but now Armel's in trouble. OG just smothered them in that radiant triangle. His jabs even still trying to run, may not make it out. BZM. He'll go for a bit of a chase, but Dream Call's on cooldown for another five seconds. So the chase continues here from the puck. They'll have the coil up in just a moment. ATF, he'll land the Burrow Strike anyway. They may not even need the coil. And they don't. OG. This is that stage of the game now where you, you give a big team fight away to a team like OG and they, they just start to get out of control. Yeah, they get a little bit too overconfident on Fnatic playing on that triangle, seeing a Chen, thinking it's a soft target. Right, you know, they come in with two cores, get a link off, but that's a Chen with a train protector. There's a lot of sustain with a mech on hand in the hand of God, and it's just enough to turn that for OG. The overextends. Maybe just not expecting the mech there on Tiger, but the, the heal certainly was going to be enough here for OG. And well, Fnatic, that's a big, big price to pay to, to try and invade that Radiant Triangle. OG, 3k net worth advantage, 17 minutes in. Still anyone's game here, and of course, Armel still top of the net worth board, but. Like you kind of mentioned earlier, John Yuragi with that double Midas, the Tempest double, going to be a real pain to try and keep up with us. Well, now BZM does get caught out once again. DJ is doing a fantastic job with all the scouting. He's providing to the side of Fnatic, and BZM this time getting caught with his pants down. Yeah, good punishment coming out from Fnatic. Just uh, getting someone who's a little bit too far forward scouting in that top jungle. Uh, it It's still pretty decent for OG. That is space. I think you're more than willing to sacrifice even a couple of cores like that just to get Yuragi pretty big, although you would want some timings here for BZM to play with. Fnatic is still getting that build-up they want. DJ's still scouting. He is. Yuragi, that'll be the Tempest double. They just want the bonus gold, but they won't even find that. It does expire. Yuragi, the real man himself, obviously in his own triangle, just keeping that farm going. Right into the Gleipnir build-up that we see so often with these Arc Wardens. Top lane, DJ again trying to get some information. They are going to find Palos though, ATF. He's there right onto the Razor. They've got the Yule Scepter up. Cancel the TP and Palos. He's going to drop. No problems here for OG. Fnatic, they, they're kind of relying on that Pos 1 Razor this game, John. But again, it's been a bit of a rough start for him. Again, he just has to farm so far forward because Armel is eating that safe farm, getting that build up. And with that kill once more, they're going to go into the Roche Pit. They've got the Tempest down. The doubles are there, the army's there, the skeletons are just standing outside to give that bonus damage. You're not even hitting. <laughs> Look at them skellies, John, just, just scouting out for the team. Looking fantastic. 
Roshan will go down. No contest to come out from Fnatic. They will let this one go the way of OG. And in fact, mass TP's coming in down towards the bottom lane. Or rather, just one TP coming down towards the bottom lane. All you need is ATF. He'll, uh, he'll defend very, very easily here against the Ench. No problems whatsoever. And then just the wave clear coming out from OG just stops whatever Fnatic wants to do with their creep army from John Uel, with Spiderlings coming out from Jabs. They're, they're not able to apply as much in terms of split push. It just feels like OG is still fairly happy, I even if you try to make those plays. The blink timing again from Amaru has really paid off. He's got his Yules up, he's got a Ghost Scepter up to live through the damage coming through from Armel and Palos. There are some key timings for Fnatic that's set to come out soon, like the BKB for Palos is pretty damn close. You've got the disassembly into BKB for Armel ready to go. So this could be the point where Fnatic's more than willing to start grouping up once more and facing head on to that control from OG. But you have to remember, they picked the terrain protector into that, knowing that the BKBs are key for Fnatic. They've always got a BKB pierce here. That they do. That's a power spike now for Fnatic, but like you mentioned, they've already got the counter, and speaking of Armel, he may get caught out. BZM is there. Coil is going to be right on the edge onto the TA, but Armel will be by the T2 mid tower, so he's going to be just fine. OG, unable to really start the team fight they wanted. Even the mid lane, maybe a bit more action being brought out. Bit of a chase going on into Armel, but he's going to be just fine. It's like Chuo, oh, never mind. BZM will make a bit of a jump in. Haste is there for the Pucks, there's no problems keeping up as even Chen Yuo getting caught out in the meantime on the Ench is going to drop to Yuragi, just completely solo. At the very least though, Armel does make his way out and it's very important he does make his way out because this this kind of game, you are very dependent on the TA carrying you through this and Armel still top of the net worth board but seemingly unable to hit that spike he needs to really get going. But maybe now Fnatic, they'll get started once again onto Tiger. The Chen, not going to be able to survive with the mech. He is going to go down first. Fnatic, they'll move in for a bit more onto ATF, but he'll bar a strike out of there. In fact, now the epicenter going to be channeled. He'll get into the Ghost Scepter as well and go for a TP out. Do they have a cancellation? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Just TP. There's nothing else to it, John. Just TP out. I mean, their only reliable stun is Boundless. That, that's it. You, you're reliant on maybe a good Chen, uh, Enchantress army coming out from John Well, not quite at that area. So he just gets the bail. He gets the BKB usage out from Palos. First BKB use, oh. and they find nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We'll have a bit of a look at this team fight once again. You see ATF's cooldown, or rather countdown, on the uh, on the TB there. He just pops the Ghost Scepter, realizing nobody can cancel. Bye. <laughs> See you guys later. Jeez. DJ, I mean, he was trying to get there in time, but just could not get a boundless off. And it's just a very rough affair once again as OG... Continue to hold on to this Aegis for another two minutes and we'll see if they can group up and force another team fight. It's actually Fnatic. They will smoke up as three and maybe try to find a pickoff on their own, but it seems like Fnatic are more interested in finding a place to farm right now. Yeah, they're just maybe scouting out here. They're, they are about to hit that level 20 spike on Armel, though. Armel makes the jump in. Ghost Scepter is there once again onto ATF. DJ going to stun him up, but ATF's got help in coming. BZM will show up. And they keep going here. Armel does get caught out. In they go once again. The TA already threw all the refraction charges and BCM forcing the BKB out. There's your overgrowth onto the TA and Armel oh, can't do nothing. No. He's gone. Januel, he'll go for a run, but there's not much he can do either. Just stun him up and take him down. You talked about it, John. Overgrowth right through the BKB. Yeah, and again, that's the first BKB use of Armel. Like, he holds on as long as he can because he knows Chu is around. Forced to use it anyway. Dies anyway. Two fresh BKBs from Fnatic's cores, which are the key timings. It's just not doing anything. And OG, they, they just get to run around or bind space out for Yuragi. We've got great activity coming out from BZM and from Amar. And Fnatic aren't able to keep up quite as much. They're not too far behind, mind you. It's a 2k lead for OG. Not the worst thing in the world at this point, but it does feel like the momentum is starting to build up as Fnatic aren't able to really land their shots. Absolutely not. Bottom lane. Jabs being surrounded here. Spark rates will give the vision into the glaive near and they'll just lock him down. No problem, though Jabs will continue to try and run, but the slows are just too much. Yuragi now on a mega kill streak. Considering the start he had during that laning stage, he has really caught up quite effectively and now topped the net worth board as well. Armel just can't really hold on to that net worth lead he had and when well, OG is set to take over the game. Yeah, and this is where it becomes really challenging for Fnatic. How do you jump 
Yuragi. You're relying mainly on DJ. And he can scout for it, can get some mobility going. He's trying now. He's going to try with the Wukong's command out and the Boundless Strike. They'll just lock him down with the Gleipnir there, and in comes ATF. Palos is there as well with the BKB, but TP's out once oh again, Yuragi. God. Oh, not again. They just TP right out. Overgrowth is there. Onto the Razor. Palos is going to go. BKB wears off as well, Armel. He's just gone. Sometimes, Jonathan, stuns win you games. In fact, most times, stuns just win you games and... If you can't actually kill anybody, if they could literally just press T and get the hell out of there, how do you win this game as Fnatic? You honestly don't. Think. Again, John Ewald's not there with any sort of stun on hand. The heal comes true and just TP lol again. Like, <laughs> DJ has an Orchid. They're trying to hunt. That's the idea, right? Like, they don't have the mobility to catch that Arc Warden off guard. They have to rely on their pause four. It's just not doing anything. Like, they need the Enchantress there with a stun creep somehow. DJ going to be able to get the same fat here, I think. Oh, apparently not. He is going to drop, and in the meantime, an ATF. Uh, that's a team wipe. That, that's a full team wipe. A across the map, they just completely wiped them on the side of OG. A Fnatic, again, are off to a great start in game two. A, a much closer game number two, but we're not at this stage, Don. 10k net worth lead now to OG, and we'll get to see a replay of what the hell happened here. Well, there's Yuragi taking out one. No problems there onto Jan Yuel. Meanwhile, BZM, rather ATF, fighting somebody else, but just too many kills happening across the map. Yeah, it's so them. split up. Like, when Fnatic groups up, it doesn't pan out. When we're splitting up, it doesn't pan out. OG's just working everything. Taiga solo pushes to mid tier too. <laughs> like, it's, it's just gone. His creep army is just there. You don't have that clear out from Fnatic to reliably destroy that. Like, you just don't have that same clear as a Puck provides you, as a Sand King provides you, even the... Even the Terrain Protector has pretty decent wave clear coming through with Nature's Grasp and oh, no. you have nothing. Oh, no. Bot lane, ATF, they'll make the jump in. They will force the BKB out and this time Armel will TP. <laughs> yeah, they tried to glaive near true, doesn't quite catch that spell immunity, but they force another BKB US use out. That still feels like a pretty good win for OG. Down to six seconds already. He just bought this like two minutes ago. Yeah. Like that's that's insanity. That's That's rough. He, it's six seconds spell immunity, and you're dealing with the overgrowth. There's not much of a window you can really get to find kills with that. Oh, now. here we go again. Chu, knowing the BKB's down, we'll make the jump in. Onto Armel, just trying to secure the TA pickoff, or at least set up a fight here. DJ going to be around to try and help Armel out. See, we'll get to the high ground. Looks like he's going to be just fine for now, but OG, even with just supports, just so confident as BZM just takes down Palos. Tier 3 tower or not, he just does not give a crap. They'll go in for the top tier three, and in fact, Chu, he's found the Monkey King in the tree line. ATF's gonna be there, and that'll be enough. <laughs> Dagon out from BZM, just take him oh out. Oh god. That's rough. Yeah, BZM's got the Eblade Dagon, so he can just kind of snipe people now. Oh, pretty, pretty good timing for Fnatic. Well, not quite done here. No, certainly not, Jonathan. Uh, OG obviously doing something you should never do in a, in a game, and that's smurfing right now here against Fnatic. It's just <laughs> a very, very one-sided affair once again here for OG. Tips are coming out for ATF, and well, how can you not tip the man, Jonathan? He's had a fantastic... Yeah, they call it. They, they, they just, call it. They've seen enough. It's rough, right? You, you get all these BKBs, you can play around them. You go for this Broodmother to try to get aggressive. <laughs> you find some early kills. <laughs> oh, there it is. There of it course, is. at the end waiting. of the series, Amar gives it to them. And, <laughs> you know, Fnatic had a decent first series, very rough time up against OG. And you can see just how motivated Amar is in particular, right? He... Yeah. Had a target on the back of Jabs in Game 1. Maybe not as much here in Game 2, but they certainly made it hellish for Fnatic. Now, there were some timings there. Like, Armel hit his level 20. He had the Dispel Talent on hand. It did waste the Overgrowth in the last fight, but they just keep chasing anyway. And here comes Sumbi, Jonathan. He is not looking too happy. Oh, boy. Well, we'll be a meeting after this series, I think. Not looking happy whatsoever. Well, for now, Jonathan, we'll let that meeting happen. We are going to head off to a short <laughs> break. And, of course, right after that break, we'll be back with our lovely panel for our next series. We'll see you then.